Hello, this is Metamicro, and I've got a video for you. Uh, this is uh, a synthesizer that I picked up off of uh, Amazon.com. It actually comes from from Japan. It's called the the Gaken SX150 Mark II. It's it's called the Mark II because there is actually a Mark I. Uh, it's a little bit different than this. It's black, and you may actually come across it if you do a search on this synthesizer after this video. Um, I picked this up initially because, well, really because it's it's cheap. It's and, and cheap is not the right word. Really, uh, it's inexpensive. Uh, I picked this up from Amazon um, for I believe just under thirty dollars, and it it actually it makes some pretty interesting noises for hey thirty dollars. And uh, you can't go wrong because it's um, it is an analog synthesizer. I figure what's What's going on with this thing is it's you know it's one of those deals that you buy at one of those stores at the mall or whatever and this ends up on some executive's desk top you know and this is like oh look at my little synthesizer and you you know look how cool I am uh, but in any case I don't care really how <laughs> how it was initially made or who it was initially intended for it is a real synthesizer um, and it makes some interesting sounds and that's what's what's important about stuff in your studio is it makes interesting noises. Um, and uh, from there, we can do all kinds of stuff. So I want to start off, start off here with, um, with the basics. Um, I actually put these little red dots here on top of these buttons so I could kind of see what I was doing a little better. Uh, that's just some nail polish. Um, and if you can take a look, hopefully you can see this in the video properly. Uh, we've got what you would expect on a lot of synthesizers. Um, you've got a pitch envelope and you've got a cutoff frequency and a resonance frequency. A lot of, a lot of guys, um, that's all they really need. Uh, we have an LFO uh, rate, depth, and some, uh, some attack and decay. And um, that's pretty much it. Now, the, the, the way that the input for this is a, a stylus. Uh, and you run the stylus down this, uh, this little ribbon so there's a noise right there, uh, and it makes an electrical contact. And uh, the further up and down you go, this uh, on this black strip right here, it changes the pitch frequency. Um, and there you go with that. What I want to do before I really dig in too much here is I want to uh, take a little sidetrack uh, just for a moment and show you how this thing this thing is hooked up because um, one of the things that this <laughs> synthesizer lacks is a volume knob. There is no volume knob to be found. Uh, it does actually have on the bottom right here, you'll see it does have a, a little tuning uh, little knob so you can tune it with the rest of your equipment. And it uh, runs off of batteries. Uh, it does not have any uh, way to plug in any external power device. So we have that. And I wanted to show you uh, as kind of like a side thing. I know this is we're really talking about the the Gokken SX150, but I always I want to take an opportunity every time I make one of these videos to point some stuff out, uh, just so you can maybe learn a few things. And if you haven't learned a few things, maybe um, um, maybe spur on some inspiration, the things that you haven't thought of before. So what I've got above it, because I don't have a volume control, is I've got one of these little Behringer. Uh, Micromix MX400 guys, and it's got four channels. They are mono channels, which is just fine because this is mono equipment for the most part. Um, and uh, that allows me to have a volume knob for uh, attenuating the stuff that comes out here. The, 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 the signal that comes out of this thing is actually pretty hot. Um, and so uh, if I'm trying to mix it with other tabletop type synthesizers in my setup, um, it's definitely something you need. Okay, so what I've got here, take a look, is I've got what you would, uh, I guess a layman would call this uh, just like a headphone splitter, okay? So this jack, this 3.5 millimeter jack would go into your headphones on your iPod, whatever, and uh, you would take these and you would put two different headphones in here. Now, that's not how I'm using it. Um, you could use it that way. What I'm using it to do in this instance is I'm using it to split the signal off um, the Gokken. Okay. It almost sounds like a dirty word, doesn't it? A Gokken. Um, <laughs> so 
what I've got is with that split signal, I've got one side of it coming over to this Dan Electro um, distortion pedal. Okay? So it comes out of the synthesizer into the distortion pedal, and then I run the output of that into channel two. Channel two, okay? So just imagine I don't have anything hooked up right now. So the, the, the chain, the signal path right here would be coming out of here through a distortion pedal, which I can turn off and on, right? And that's on channel two, okay? And the other one, what I have is, I have that going through this uh, Zoom Multistomp MS100BT, uh, which is um, a really neat pedal. I'm not going to go into it right now. Uh, I should do a review just with this thing by itself because it's really fantastic. Uh, and uh, you can set up multiple effect chains of different pedal types um, all together. Right now, I have it just set up for uh, just a big haul reverb. Okay. So, and that's running back through channel one. So, on channel one, I have a clean signal that's going out to here. And channel two, I have a distorted signal that's running back. So, what I've essentially done here is I've created an FX loop. Okay, so if I, if this was a, a full size, you know, my Mackie mixing board up here, if this is a full size mixing board, um, this would be essentially, a, you know, this would be an aux send. That's how I'm, I'm that's how I'm using it. Okay, so let's 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 listen to some sounds here. Um, this 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 particular button keeps falling off. I will say, you know, <laughs> um, this it feels really cheap. It really does. It's like really cheap kind of feeling plastic and knobs. And um, also, it comes it has this little speaker here. So if it's not hooked up the way I have it hooked up into something, it it really sounds it sounds super super cheap. Sounds uh really really cheesy. Okay, so here we go. So I'm gonna here's the stylus. And let's. Uh, Turn up the volume here. Make sure I've got it plugged in the wrong thing. It does have a line in, so you can use the filters for other things. I'll get to that later. So here we go. Okay, that's a. This is dry. This is a dry signal. I know it's not blowing your socks off here. Let me let me do. <laughs> Let me hear it do a little sweep. A lot of uh, a lot of the a lot of with playing the synthesizer is technique because there's different ways you can play. I mean, you can sit here and go and sweep back and forth, or you can kind of cut into the cut into the ribbon like this. Uh, you can um, waver a little bit. Uh, make a little vibrato kind of by wiggling the, the stylus. And it's all about practice, you know, you, once you get in there. And uh, oddly enough, what's really strange about this synthesizer is I, I think uh, by touching the end of it, it's causing, uh, I've only started to look at some of the, the, the wiring in this thing and the schematics, but by touching this, it seems to short it out a little bit and create a dirtier signal. You hear the difference there? Let me. It, it makes like a little growly, growl sound compared to this. See that? That's pretty clean here. Try this. A little growl. And all I'm doing is I put my finger and I'm touching the stylus when I'm... Uh, that effect will become more dramatic as I continue on here. So, um, all the knobs do what you would expect to do here. We'll just start with uh, the infamous cutoff frequency. Let's do that and just start down here. So just what you would expect. Add a little bit of resonance. Now this resonance on this thing, it is really, really uh, squeaky. I, don't know, I guess squeaky would be the, the proper word, I guess. Squeaky. Um, really high frequency. 
<laughs> to the point where you can hear it distorting a little bit. <laughs> it definitely has character. A little, a little bit on the annoying side for me if you go past kind of 12 o'clock on the cutoff. <laughs> And uh, the attack and decay. If I turn the attack all the way to the left, you get really more staccato. Sounding, sounding stuff and uh, change the delay. Decay, excuse me. Doesn't uh, do what you're expecting to do, right? Um, well, this uh, it actually, what we have going on here is on the on position, um, it, it, it has this, um, I, I guess for the, the, the proper term for this would be a VCO. It has, it has a waveform that sits, it's sitting on top of all this. And you can hear it go, wow. And then uh, that waveform, you can change the, um, um, the, the length of it and the shape of it just a little bit. So you can hear, if I turn this all the way down, you, you won't hear it very much. Very chirpy. Now, as I turn the attack, you'll hear it go, Dwow. and you can hear it as it gets to a certain point in time. It just dives. It just goes, rump, dive. You hear it? <laughs> and um, I, I guess that it's, since it's sitting on top of everything, I guess that is a, a VCO. Or is that a, no, because this is a VC. Okay, well, I'll leave that for the for you guys in the in the comments. Um, so uh, we can change the decay of that, so how long it takes to get. So, so it doesn't just dive off the end of a cliff at the end, you know, like this. Diving off the end of the cliff. Okay. So it has another mode in here, it's called gate. I have no idea why it's called gate. Uh, but what it does is just get rid of that whole VCO that's sitting on top of everything and just bypasses it. So now I got a straight, straight signal here, straight signal that, notice how this does nothing now. I'll make it pretty drastic here and turn it back on. Straight signal. And you have that sitting on top of it. Okay. Now, uh, all this time I've been working with, um, you know, it, it has, it is, it's this kind of sawtooth. It's, you know, if I put it on an oscilloscope, this is not going to be a sawtooth, but that's what we've been dealing with before all, all this time here. Uh, it has another waveform that we can switch to, uh, which is a square wave, which we're all familiar with. This is going to be very off and on, you know. Oh, let me get rid of that. And let me change the rate so you can start to hear it. And you can hear that, that oscillator just going up and down. You know, very hard edges. Compared to this, which is, it's almost a dirty sine wave. <laughs> okay. Uh, so let's mess with the LFO a little bit. Mm, a nice little vibrato. We start to get little theremin sounding stuff. sci-fi
Okay, the UFO has landed. And it takes off. So, you know, well, that's a little cheesy kind of sounds in here, but, you know, um, you know, the, the way I look at this is for 30 bucks, you can, you know, make some of these cheesy kind of sounds that uh, definitely you could use them, um, mix them in with, with other music that you're already doing and uh, do that instead of going to some, you know, you know, some, um, some collection of sound effects that you've got in some loop collection, you know, that you downloaded, uh, make them yourself, you know, you know, there's your little ray gun. You can modify it. You know, here's a... You know, you know out of... Out of just, just tweaking with it a little bit, you get nice little, you know, like I said. Nice little theremin type sounds. Okay. So that's that, and uh, let me just go to square wave a little bit. So you, so you get what I'm saying here. Um, you know, let's get it in a nice little sweep, you know. You know, run that into your, your DAW and, you know, throw some effects on it. You can do all kinds of stuff with, with just basic sounds like this. Um... There you go. And it's all in the way you play it, too. Like, I can hear, I'm going to cut into the ribbon a little bit. So now, I mean, I'm just going to add a little bit of that uh, VCO here. the cut off here so you can maybe see what I'm doing a little better. So here, yeah, so you get a nice little drone that you can do all kinds of stuff with. Let's change waveforms back to this one over here. So I'm just going to see if I can get the messed up sound that I can get. This is the most messed up I can do here. Change the decay over here and make it sweep a little quicker. So lots of lots of noise you can make for sure, huh? Um, let's play with some effects because that's been that's all just straight up and um, dry, and frank frankly that's not how I use it most of the time. <laughs> um, it's okay if I'm just trying to capture a sample and um, then I plan to do something with it later and add some effects, but most of the time. Uh, it's easier just to capture the effects as you go. So let's turn this down for a second and let's go over to the zoom 
and I turn on the Hall effect. So there we go. So now that's on. Let me turn this back on. I did that so there was no big pops, hopefully. Bad for equipment. So let's turn this up and see what we get. Whoa, so now we got something interesting, don't we? Now it's not sounding so much like a toy, is it? Got some real brassy kind of uh, trumpety, trombone-ish. Definitely brassy. It sounds, uh, if, I, if I change the attack, it's about halfway, and change the decay a little bit. Take advantage of that waveform, that VCO that's sitting on top of it. I start getting some real Vangelis kind of sounding, you know, Blade Runner-ish stuff, right? You know, hey. Kind of cool. Even makes these weird little pops when you pull it off really quick. <laughs> So let's let's take that and uh, let's mess with the volume a little bit and uh, kind of blend them together and see what we can what we can do. I say. Nice and quiet, yeah. Okay, so that's we got that. Let's let's find some other sounds. I think I think you get the idea that you can do all kinds of really kind of moody. Yeah, with a little bit of practice, uh, I think you could get some interesting sounds. Now, what I haven't pointed out yet is there are just two little thumb press buttons. One says VCF and one says LFO. Um, hey, if that's what the the guy who designed this says, that's what it is. That's what it is. It's not. That's not what. <laughs> that's not what you get when you push it. But let me demonstrate. Getting all kinds of flavors of uh, Blade Runner in here, aren't we? So that's a VCF. It kind of like opens the filter up, it sounds like. Um, the LFO changes the pitch. Makes it dive. Pretty uh, dramatically. If I guess if you got if you practiced, you, know, you could probably control this a little bit better with your thumb. It might be easier too, you know, if you were holding it in your hand. Let's let's try that. So, so a little bit more uh, variety. Okay. So now we got that. Let's, for the fun of it, I'm going to turn on 
the distortion pedal and let's see what we get out of that now this, this thing is noisy as a bugger uh, but it does add a lot of flavor to it so let's try that that's on on channel two remember I split the signal off and it's running back into here and uh, the whole thing is running through the zoom so we're just going to get now distorted signal I'm going to keep it with the Blade Runner kind of theme going on here for a second. <laughs> makes little squelchy little messed up sounds sometimes. It makes me laugh. I'm going to touch the stylus and see what happens. I'm going to turn it up too for a second so you can just hear how noisy this thing is. <laughs> you, can, you can almost uh, just make some sounds with the zoom, with the hall, just making random noise, white noise. Anyway, I digress. Um, so the reason why I set this up is uh, this, this particular way was to kind of show you that um, you can have two different setups going at the same time. It's kind of like an auxiliary effects bus with this little, you know, MX400 micro mix. Uh, and uh, because they're on two different channels, you can mix them together. So here we go with the nice smooth. And now we can grid it up. And kind of maybe we can even dial it in as we go. That's actually one of the, the uh, unfortunate side effects of playing with this. Sometimes uh, because of the volume, uh, the way that these filters work, because it is an analog device, that sometimes it just goes from kind of quiet to all of a sudden just super loud. Um, I really should be running this through uh, a compressor. Um, but for this video, I'm just trying to keep it a little bit on the simpler side. Okay, so let's... That's the distortion part of the this thing so the, let's keep that down and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let's see let's turn up the decay just a wee bit more not to absurd levels <laughs> let's get a nice long tail and uh, let's let's see if we can play around with some more staccato type sounds by uh, adjusting some of these filters So I'm just cutting into the ribbon. I think I like that.
<laughs> we're really hitting on those harmonics, aren't we? Yeah, I wonder what that sounds like with a distortion pedal. Let's try it out, huh? <laughs> All right. Let's, let's throw some of their original sound back in there. See, I, I would I would sample that just just that one note, and you know, and uh, change the pitch of it a little bit, do a little bit of math, and uh, get that on a certain note, and boom, run it across the entire keyboard, and you would have some very a very interesting sample to play with. Let's see what else we can do. We've been playing with this um, this particular waveform. Let's switch it up. That's right out of a horror film. A sci-fi horror film. I'm gonna put the decay up a little bit here. You haven't even messed with the cutoff frequency. Oh, see, it gets loud real quick. Take out some of that decay, and so I can turn the cutoff back up. With the, the cutoff going through the the reverb, that was just too much. Ooh, that's squeaky. down a little bit so I can get the Oh, 
<laughs> okay. <laughs> so that's the Gakken uh, SX150, and that's what it sounds like. Uh, it sounds like a whole bunch of other stuff too, but I think you get the idea that it's. Uh, hey, let me ask you: Is it is that worth thirty bucks? Is that worth thirty bucks? You, you, tell me you don't have like a delay pedal hanging around or a distortion pedal hanging around just to run this thing through, and you go, oh well, I just wanted to sound good, and I want to have this expensive, you know, two thousand dollar analog synthesizer. Well, you know, <laughs> let's start with thirty bucks, okay? Thirty bucks will get you full on analog synthesizer to make all kinds of um, cool little pitchy noises to, uh, that run into all your songs and and productions now uh, what i'm doing with this particular one is uh i i'm actually going to modify it really soon uh first of all i'm going to uh modify the output and uh put a potent on under and, and then actually so i can have some sort of volume control because the signal really is hot coming out of there uh so i'm going to do that and um there's uh there is an option um or uh, actually adding some CV controls in here, some control voltage uh, manipulation of the sound. Because um, really, what you know, if you, uh, depending on how familiar you are you with with control voltage, uh, really, you know, uh, this this connection right here, the, this between this and this, when it makes an electrical connection between these two contacts, I mean, anything could be here. I could put a knob here and just have it permanently connected together and be changing the voltage. Um, and uh, there's all kinds of things you can do with essentially this part of the instrument and this part of the instrument and actually hooking some stuff in here. Uh, since this changes the pitch, obviously if you have, um, uh, you know what you're doing, you can actually, you know, step through the different uh, voltages here and you're creating different pitches, right? Well, that was pretty badass. <laughs> I'm just, I guess I'm further proving the point that this is worth 30 bucks, okay? I'm telling you. Uh, what I plan to do with it is actually is uh, there's somebody in Japan, uh, since this is from, actually from Japan, uh, someone who from Japan who's come up with a way to add MIDI to this. So uh, I think that's going to be one of my, um, I know it is actually one of my upcoming projects is I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to MIDI-fy this thing so I can um, hook it up to uh, a controller keyboard. I'm not sure yet. Uh, what I'm going to do with this ribbon. I think when I add the MIDI to it, this ribbon's going to go away. So I'm trying to, right now, before I, I jump into that project, trying to figure out exactly how maybe I can uh, keep this in place and maybe add a switch to it somewhere where I can switch the MIDI off and play it uh, manually or... I don't know. Uh, well, then that's, pro that's the primary reason why I haven't actually started the project. So let me wrap this up. And... Uh, um, say good luck, uh, with your, uh, your projects and, uh, and, uh, I hope, you, uh, um, you, uh, take a good look at this and do some research on the web and see if it's something that you might be interested in. I know I'm having plenty of fun with it and I think that you're going to have fun with it too. So I'll talk to you later. See you on the flip side.